Good afternoon. I'm Richard Donald Smith, Dr. Richard Donald Smith, uh, flutist, uh, uh, music educator, and uh, music scholar, especially African music scholar. And um, I, I wanted to give some of the proper impressions about music education in Africa. I know I said um, it's not what you think it is. Uh, by that, what I, I, I meant that most people think of African musicians as learning through some traditional route, father to, father to son, um, um, apprenticing with someone. And uh, it was like that, maybe uh, 19th century and much of the 20th century. Um, but there have also been things like African composers. There have been um, African scholars. Uh, um, and what, as musicians, um, you should know that there have been African musicians who even delve into classical music. Now, the question is, what is music education like in Africa? I spoke to a friend of mine, um, that's uh, Dr. Adeogun Adabawali, because I, he, he's actually in Ni Nigeria um, at the University of Nigeria in Suka, because I wanted people to have uh, some ideas what the uh, history of music education uh, uh, was in Africa. Now, at the University of Nigeria and Suka, and that particular university is, is very important because it was the first university to have a, a, a department of music. And that was 1961, a, a, um, a significant time because that was also about the time when African countries were becoming independent, uh, as well as Caribbean countries. Um, the department was first chaired by an American, I believe her name was Edna Edit, and she um, was, was head of department for uh, uh, several years. Uh, but then in 1967, a big war took place in Nigeria. It was the Nigerian Civil War, which we in America uh, came to know as the Biafran War. And it was a war in which the Igbos had wanted to separate from Nigeria and form an independent nation called Biafra. When that happened, the other two major tribes in Nigeria, the, the houses and the Yorubas, um, went to war with the Igbos. Now, Igbos were not only scattered, well, were not only in Igbo land, which is in the eastern part of Nigeria, but they were also in these other areas, in the Yoruba areas and in Hausa areas. So many of the Igbos had to come back. Um, significant within Suka is that the uh, University of Nigeria and Suka became an important post for the Igbo soldiers. During that time, much of what existed in the music department was destroyed. Now, I'm not sure if that was done by rampage, I, but I know that I talked with, with um, Igbo composers and I talked with some others who would tell me what happened to the material because of the war, how much there was, was lost. Now, once the university um, got going again, there was this other problem. And the problem had to do with how Africans could learn to play musical instruments. Well, there were no instrumental teachers, or very few. And the normal uh, training on instrumental music that we have here was not was I, I was I don't want to say non-existent because there were piano players, and things, but but some of the band and orchestral instruments there were no teachers for them even at the university, but the university kept going strong. It put some of its emphasis on African music, and this meant that every student at that university had to learn both Western music and African music. All students did Western dance, African dance. All students did um, um, African instrumental ensembles and Western instrumental ensembles, um, uh, African opera and Western opera. Of course, African opera was a bit different than what, um, well, it was a lot different. It was really drumming. It was sort of a pageant type of thing, but very dramatic. Um, um, the Western music that they did was not the traditional Western opera. They made up, the students made up operas, um, and, but in the Western form. So that's the way they were taught. Um, for me, I 
find this to be a, a very strong element of what Hinsuka transported to many of the other universities around the country. And that was because um, most of the lecturers in the other universities had to come from Insuka. They had the big music department after the students graduated. They went on to teach at other universities. And this for me is why I have so many contacts and friends in universities all around Nigeria. Um, because Insuka um, hosted me as visiting lecturer several times. And some of those others who went on to, um, to teach at other universities uh, were former students of mine at Insuka. Some of them are professors now and associate professors and uh, you know, quite, a, quite an establishment of, 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 of what was of, of, of how Insuka affected the rest of the country. But still students didn't um, have um, what we call uh, professional teachers for their practical learning uh, on, on instruments until um, the, ninth, uh, the the twenty tens or so, perhaps a little be perhaps a little before that, in in uh, um, in I guess in actuality or in theory, but um, along came in the very late nineteen nineties uh, two conservatories. One was the Musan. Uh, it's called Musan Music Society of Nigeria uh, School of Music. The other was the Mountaintop um, Organization Conservatory. Now, uh, they started off as, as, as um, I, I would call them more, uh, more or less uh, in-house type organizations. They were not established accredited for some of the, 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 the diplomas they give now, but they had started teaching people in formal ways. Students were learning to do the ABRSM or the British Royal Schools of Music exams. Students were uh, had to learn theory, and and, and uh, students had to had to learn um, how to play in real orchestras because in the, the universities, orchestras were not were not, not not very strong. The reason being that they didn't have instrumental teachers there. Uh, students were like beginners. Some of the students I, I, that I had myself. And I can tell you that um, for flute players out there, I, if, I, I would take along some of the books, you know, the Anderson books, even some of the beginner books. And I couldn't do much, much with them because the students had not learned really the basics of playing the instruments. But this all changed when they brought in these conservatories. Um, to get into Musan, um, a student has to already have passed level five in the practical part of their instrumental or singing part. And they all also had to have passed uh, grade five in the theory part. Now, very competitive to get in because um, there would be an audition process and there would be many to audition because at Musan, they studied on full scholarship. Now, how did this occur? It occurred because a communications company and the British government um, put up much of the funds for books, things like that, and also for the training of these students. Um, um, MTMM scholarships can only support maybe 60, 60 persons at the conservatory. Um, they, 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 they enter, they have to show that they pass those exams and then they have to do a performance test. Um, they stay for two years. After two years, they get a diploma, but I think that's about to change because I think they're giving them a three-year uh, uh, general certificate of education and which is somewhat higher. It's just before the degree, but also at Musan now, if a student finishes, gets that diploma, because of the quality of these people that enter, the universities, or certainly many of them, and the ones in the Lagos area, where these, these conservatories are, will give them advanced placement in the university. They, 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 they um, if they finish at the second year level with the diploma, they get third year level 
I mean, they get second, uh, first year level, uh, second year level when they enter the university. So this is a tragic. I'm proud to say that um, during the summers when I'm there, I give master classes. And many of the students that I get from Musan students, primarily Musan students, and students from the universities in the Lagos area, um, that's University of Lagos, Lagos State University, uh, um, mainly. So I get some of those students at my master, master's classes. Um, what do I do in a master situation? Oh, I don't just teach flute. I get guitar players, I get singers, I get saxophone players, I get, I get even electric bass players to come in. Or a group comes in to play, to show me what they can do. Now, one of the reasons they, I, they do that, but it's great, I don't mind. I, I travel with lots and lots of materials and the materials they need, I probably have, and I have, I take quality materials that make them sound even better. Um, the proud thing that happened a few years ago was that a trumpet player who was seeing me regularly um, was, was uh, auditioning for just a singular place that was a singular opening at Musan, uh, five trumpet players uh, applied and he, was the only one that got in. Uh, he actually graduated in, in just last, uh, last, last year um, after having completed his studies at the 2019 level. So just to give you an idea of how some of the, what, the, what these, some of the people sound like, I just want you, you to hear someone, uh, some Musan uh, uh, students or former students play the flute player um, was a student of mine for three years, 2017, uh, 2018, and 2019. Um, he would come to my classes, and because of the materials I brought, he would always want me to leave some of those materials with him. Uh, for flute players here, who you know, one book that that, that he and I and also a clarinet player insisted I give them during the 18 and 19 was the Kincaidiana book of all things because of the way it teaches you to breathe. I had done those uh, exercises with them and the idea of phrasing. So these are pretty advanced players, but they needed refined um, uh, playing. So uh, this, the uh, flute is, is Wisdom uh, Awuzie and, and three of his string playing friends uh, from an orchestra that they had um, in the Nigeria called the Divine Symphony Orchestra. They're playing uh, uh, just a small part of the Mozart flute quartet in D major. Okay. Oh, oh. Sorry. So we'll get that going. Let's share the screen. You have to watch this for me first. Thank you. 
Share and yep. Well, that gives you a sense. Well, you're probably wondering, well, if they don't have teachers, how do they learn to play like that? And this is the huge difference that I started seeing in 2011. I mean, it was that late, um, although it had it was happening before uh, I got there. What it is, it's this whole thing of YouTube and professional videos by competent players. Um, some of them. Uh, have managed to find videos um, that actually taught them. And I actually taught them videos that, 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 that seemed to work with them. And uh, I can name, I know some players in one case. I recall a clarinet, a clar well, I knew several clarinet players and they were using videos. But one name I, I, I heard come up was Martin Frost. Now, I didn't know who Martin Frost was. But it was re in re-listening to a conversation I had with um, a player, uh, a, a very good clarinet player, uh, where he mentioned the video um, instructor that he, he used. And I also heard that name come up when another clarinet player, who I'll mention later, he, he, was, um, uh, he, he had a picture on itself on YouTube with his idol. And his idol was this Martin Frost, who was in Sweden. Now, there may have been other teachers. Um, I know that they had a couple of idols, one of whom um, was, uh, was Anthony McGill here in New York. So, um, but a lot of these videos had to, you know, had to be paid for. So they, they had to come up with some arrangement that they would allow them to take part in that instruction. Uh, there, um, there are other um, things that I think help. It's the orchestras. It's, when I say orchestra, well, the Divine Symphony Orchestra is the closest thing to a symphony, to a, to a professional symphony orchestra. I heard them play things like The Last Movement of Tchaikovsky's Fourth, um, Finland, Finlandia, um, um, some contemporary uh, American pieces, um, uh, the, the, Egmont, the, uh, the, the Egmont Symphony of, of Beethoven. And um, at, at that point, though, they were in rehearsals, so the performances were not finished. But I say there was a lot of energy there, and it, and it would have excited a person. So that's, uh, I, I guess, suppose I would like to hit, have more of Nigeria hear that orchestra. That same organization, which is the Mountaintop Conservatory, um, also sponsors the Conservatory Orchestra, which is uh, another orchestra which plays in a church, uh, the Mountain and Fire Church, um, on Sunday mornings. So. A lot of the instruction and music, uh, um, and even with popular musicians, comes through the church. Church has choir directors, they have choruses, and they have these the, these organizations called gospel bands. And of course, I can I can't tell you much about these these things in this little this this short uh, time. But uh, if anyone wants to discuss these sort of things more, I'll tell you at the end how to get in touch with me. Um, there. Uh, um, there are also um, Nigerian composers, um, Fela Shwande, um, uh, uh, 
W.W. Uh, w. Uh, Chesna, uh, T.K.E. Phillips, uh, Ayo Bonfile, Eliza Kwame, um, um, uh, and some of those people have actually, actually managed to study in the U United States, particularly the last two I mentioned, uh, Laze Kwame and Akinuba. Akinuba was the head of the ethno music, um, music, musicology department at the University of Pittsburgh for a long time. He's, he is now late. He just he passed just last year. Um, so, so, um, so I tried to let people know that I too like African music and some of the arrangements that I make are of African music. So I'm gonna let you, let you hear one that became uh, a, a, a song that uh, or a tune that I that um, I was well known for over the over around the country. People usually ask me to play this. It's variations on a Yoruba tune. The Yoruba tune is Idahun Rain Line Ritchie, and I made a set of flute variations uh, on that particular tune. And you hear me again in rehearsal with someone who is a who was a, a, a student of of uh, Musan now. Uh, attending the, the University of Lagos for to complete his degree requirements. So this is the variations? Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's try to do this. And change the sound. Alan, can you use full screen version for this? Yes, I, I think I it will message. improve the sound. Sure. Okie doke. Thank you.
better but uh, okay and so um that was the variations on the yoruba tune uh Idahin Rui Nainruti. i'm gonna go right to some more flutes to show you that there were uh, many um well not many but there were i had four of them in in that in, in the class and i took a chance uh and it was a chance that worked um i know the flute players here know the bois mortier concertos the various ones and that was, uh, I, 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 I um, taught them uh, the concerto in B minor, you know, the da 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 da. Um, I remember at the last group there, the, um, the Metropolitan Opera Flute section played at one of their, their Barmody Day concertos. Um, since coming back, I bought the whole series uh, to take with me, in fact, a couple sets of it to take with me the next time I go. So these are all uh, flute players who came to the Masterclass. The quality varies. Two of these flute players, I would say, are very good, strong players. Uh, one of them is the one who you heard playing the Mozart. Um, but the others also had a good feel for the music, just not quite the technique of the others. Um, you're going to hear two little parts of it.
yeah, so that's a, that's an, a, a sampling of the kind of things we were doing. I can tell you that 10 years ago, um, we could never have done something like that um, in Nigeria, for sure. Um, it's, 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 it was a, uh, it's a question of, of the students learning. They put a tremendous amount of time into learning by video. They don't have, have a flute teacher normally, except for when I come around, but I only go there during the summer. So, uh, and it, it's, it, it's, it's just um, hard work on their part. I uh, do take the materials uh, to them and to the other instruments. Um, I'm going to, to save time, I'm going to just uh, go right almost to the next one. It's, um, it's a piece by Fela and Nicola Pocuti. Uh, some of you may know who Fela is because he was the subject of that Broadway play Fela that not only won a Tony, um, it, was, it, it, it drew a, um, a large audience uh, for a couple of years on Broadway. Fela was a revolutionary musician um, who, who, who had a big, big effect on the rock musicians, uh, even here in the United States. A lot of them called them, he played, a, uh, he played a type of music that he called Afrobeat. And you heard a lot of rock and pop fans saying uh, during their performances, now I'm gonna play an Afrobeat number. Um, for me, it was more rock than Afrobeat, but you had, you did have them. There's one, one Afrobeat band though that is, has been very, popular, and that's the um, uh, Antibalas, which is uh, based in Brooklyn. Um, Fela, I, I, I should, I want to say too that he's a current nominee for the Rock and Roll, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, this song is Lady, and uh, uh, I arranged it with this jazz musicians, because there were some people there who also played jazz. Um, and so anyway, these are, these are some of them playing um, the song Lady by Fela. Okay. Two minutes and 30 is what we said.
Yes, I I should tell you, none of these are performance videos. These are. Oh, hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Let me just. Okay. Yeah. Um, none of those were performance videos. They're all in, in, in practices. Um, and just um, in, as I'm running, running out of time, just some things I should uh, mention, and uh, that is, uh, I, said, I mentioned the Fela is up for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, he's a nominee. Um, this year for the Grammys, the Grammys, the Grammys were won. Uh, the, the Grammy for the best global album was won by a Nigerian um, a pop musician this year named Burna Boy. He, they play, he and, and many other groups play in a form called Afro Beats. Fela's music is Afro Beat. That's a well-known term. And they the, the term Afro Beats with an S has taken its name from Fela's type of music. It's a different kind of music. It's more like a, a like an upbeat uh, uh, hip hop type, type, type music. Um, and the Nigerians are best at that. And they are dominating the continent in terms of African music right now. Um, they, uh, the other thing that I think I should mention, two of the people who were coming to, came to these master classes were people who um, won big uh, um, you know, scholarship awards uh, a couple of years ago, one two years ago, one three years ago, uh, one finishing his, finishing his uh, third year at the uh, University of Louisiana, Anna. That's um, Solomon Abang. Well, Solomon was named the winner of the David Baker Scholarship Award by the Jazz Educators Network. It's the top award given to a university a student nationwide um, for, the, for, for spirit and uh, talent and dedication to jazz studies. But Solomon's actually a, a classical player. He's going to play something with him playing a classical piece. Uh, but I'm not going to have time to do that. Um, but I have to, I do should make mention of them. Um, the other one is is um, Ola Akindipe. Some people know him as Israel in, in Nigeria. Um, he's the first Nigerian to be given a full scholarship at the Trinity Conservatory of Music in uh, in London. Uh, that's one of the UK's best conservatories. He's studying now with the principal clarinetist. Of, of the uh, Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, Michael White. But he was one of the two people who I think that I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of when I mentioned how they use the videos and how he and another very good uh, clarinet player were using the videos of Martin Frost. Um, uh, so I think I have to leave a, a, a little bit of time for questions. Uh, is, I want to thank you very much, Richard. And also, before you take a few questions, we're really short of time. But I do want to acknowledge your students that are here and that have joined us. And if they would like to say anything, uh, I invite them to unmute their mics, because I can't figure out how to do it from here. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> everyone. My name is Ola. Um, Ah, I just Actually, you. <laughs> yes, you did. I uh, I had you just talk about me. Um, I just want to you know publicly thank Dr. Smith for the wonderful work he always does in Lagos. Um, we all always he's like an inspiration to all of us. The three years I had him come to Lagos when I had lessons with him, they were like very. I don't know. I don't want to get all emotional here. But he would bring reeds <laughs> and cork graces, and we always look forward to these things. And he would, you know, I basically learned the the whole concept of diaphragm control from Dr. Smith um, every time he came to Lagos, and we always worked on that. Um, he mentioned how um, we did a few things through YouTube and so on, but um, many people, Dr. Smith is a big name in Lagos, and, um, I would just love, I just want to thank him for the wonderful things he's done. I'm currently in London studying at Trinity Lab and, um, but yes. Yes, thanks for that, Ola. Ola is the person who's at, he's, he's the one who's at uh, a, a, a Trinity Conservatory right now and in, in the Trinity College of Music in London. So he's 
he, he's, he's, he's signing in from London. <laughs> Go ahead. Anybody else? Israel, do you want to say something? That was Israel. That was it. Yeah. Uh, yes, that was Israel. That, that's me. Okay. Yes. That was you. Oh, I see you now. Okay. So, is there anyone else that has a question or whatever for Richard? As a son of there was. Sorry, I, I do see that there was a question asked earlier. Can Richard please share the names of the Nigerian composers he mentioned? Thanks. Oh, can I share the names of the Nigerian composers he mentioned? Uh, I, I mentioned. <laughs> um, I'll. I'll <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll name some. Um, they're, they're, of course, the, ones we, the ones that we know who are very recent, of course, would be Akinuba and Laz Ekoime. Akinuba, Laz Ekoime. Um, the ones who are widely known, and even, I want to say widely known, it's, you know, it's relative. It's like, if you happen to know that kind of music. Um, this Bela Schwande, uh, I mentioned him because I have heard um, WQXR uh, played his, uh, his, his um, African folk symphony. And I have also heard a, a program on QXR called Pipe Dreams. It's an organ program for organists. And um, they played his, um, um, he's an organist, but he played Lashwande also. Yeah, he played his uh, organ fantasy on Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. Uh, other ones, Ayo Bunkele, um, uh, TKE Phillips, uh, um, the, uh, let, me, let me think of some others. Um, uh, um, uh, w, 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 um, if you really want to go into more closely, close, uh, uh, more indigenous types of African composers, Meki and Zewi, um, as Christian Onyeji, who has written um, in more uh, in the form of art music. Christian Onyeji is dean, current, uh, currently he's a, he's a dean, at the University of Nigeria in Suka. Um, uh, this this uh, uh, Jude Nwankwo, who's also at Nsuka. Jude won a competition a few years ago. Um, it, it was a competition uh, uh, that would grant the, the, the winner a, a commission to have his work performed at Morehouse College on, during its anniversary period. And uh, the winner of that competition for African music was Jude and Wong Kuo. Um, and and uh, even while he was there, he, he, um, he, he emailed me videos of the perform of the rehearsals that were happening at Morehouse at that time. Um, but it, let, let me give you my email because then I can I can sum up more of them for you. My my email address is oh, Richard. Huh? Richard, I also want to say, I want to say that um, Kathy Sanger just messaged me privately, you have a presenter page. And what I would like to do is I'm going to send you an email. And if you can give me a list with all the proper spellings of everybody's names and all of this that at least my brain can process, yes. um, then I then I can send it to Kathy. And in her adeptness and wisdom, she will put it up on your presenter page. So um, I'm going to ask her to, to please share it with everybody in, in the chat very quickly. And then people can just go to the, the website, New York Flute Club, click on your presenter page, and they will find out all of this information there because we have to get off the um this session now oh okay. she sent it i see it yes so thank you i would like to us. also thank you thank you dr smith and thank you alan for a fabulous presentation i really really appreciate it and we all are just ecstatic when you hear your chat messages you will have your heart warmed and thank you thank alan. you oh very welcome <laughs> Oh, Alan, thanks so much. Thank Alan you. has worked so hard on this. Okay, thank you and goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, bye-bye. Bye. I will put up um, your email address also for anybody who's interested on the page. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.